all week the Ohio State football team had to listen to and read about how their toughness was being questioned and how their offense and the team could not perform well in inclement weather was Saturday against the Indiana Hoosiers. They answered all the questions and proved the doubters wrong. You are Locked On Buckeyes, your daily podcast on the Ohio State Buckeyes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, Buckeye fans? Welcome back to another episode of Locked On Buckeyes for the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Jay Stevens, also the host of the Jay Stevens Podcast. It is Monday, November 14th in the year 2022. And this episode of Locked On Buckeyes is brought to you by Sling TV. Sling has something for everyone especially when it comes to college football coverage. With a massive lineup of games across the ACC, Big Ten, Pac-12, and SEC, I can always catch the games I want on Sling. And now you can too. Check out Sling TV now to see the massive lineup of games they have all season long. Sling, the TV you love for a price you'll love. Try it today. During today's episode, we will discuss the numerous players that showed up and showed out against the Indiana Hoosiers on Saturday afternoon. And also we'll discuss what an amazing moment we witnessed from Cam Babb. But before we get to any of that, right here on this podcast last week, many of the podcasts you listen to, many of the Ohio State Buckeye football fans you interact with on a daily basis questioned the team's toughness questioned if they could perform in inclement weather, questioned the play calling, questioned a lot of things and the details that go on with the football team every single day. And you know what? In inclement weather, because I would tell you I was at the game on Saturday and it was snowing, it was cold, it was wet out there. They proved and showed everyone uh, they can get the job done. They can perform well. On offense and on defense, they could consistently get the job done in November in inclement weather. I went back and looked at some numbers and wanted to see how well the offense played in this game compared to previous games the Buckeyes have played. And the Buckeyes' 662 total yards of offense was the second highest total yardage for a game this year. The other one, I believe, was against Toledo where the Buckeyes were just rolling. I mean, Rolling like crazy. We also questioned, myself included, questioned Stroud, questioned some of the passing game and the passing and the uh, play calls that were made. We questioned the running game. Well, the running game was a whole lot better than a week ago. The offensive line seemed like they were inspired, playing inspired football, and Stroud was locked in and dialed in if it wasn't for a few drops. Stroud would have had over 350 passing yards in this game. Stroud was a tick shy of 300 passing yards in this game at 297, but he did connect for five touchdown passes. Mine Williams, another game for him where he clips the 100-yard mark. He actually went for 147 on the ground and one tutty in this game. Dallin Hayden was the backup running back with The starting running back, Travion Henderson, being out. Dallin Hayden showed up and played well. Had a touchdown in the first quarter of this game. Also, 19 carries, a career high in carries for him. And 102 rushing yards for him as well. 5.4 yards a pop for Dallin Hayden. 9.8 yards a pop for Mayan Williams. Both of those guys got the job done. Mayan had a long touchdown run of 48 yards. And, hey, man, he looked good. He looked really, really good. Marvin Harrison, Jr., Talk more about him in the very next segment. He was out there doing things that not even his daddy did on the football field. Seven catches, 135 through the air, receiving yards, and one touchdown of his own. The defense, man. I mean, I was not pleased with the defensive performance a week ago. They did some phenomenal things. And I mentioned earlier about the questions, and I mentioned the numbers there briefly. We'll get to some more numbers and nitty-gritty details about the game in the very next segment. But the Buckeyes are answering questions. Can they be physical up front? 
The answer is yes. Can they dominate the opposition's uh, front seven? And the, uh, the can they win the battle in the trenches? The answer is yes. Hey, they won the battle in the trenches. Even with that one of the starting off of the lineman, Dewan Jones, who was a game time decision, was ultimately scratched. Josh Fryer, backup right tackle, thrust into the starting lineup, and he played phenomenal in this game. We witnessed the game from the Ohio State Buckeyes. I was at the game, also went back and rewatched the game already prior to recording this show. We got to see them play in weather that most schools don't have to play in. Now, the winds were not as wild and crazy and wacky as they were a, a week ago where I read pregame. Hey, it's going to be about between 25 to 30 mile per hour wind gusts, and all of a sudden it's 30, 40 miles per hour, and then somebody said 50, and then Ryan Day said it was an 80 mile per hour wind gust. I'm not denying it, but it's crazy how from pregame until the end of the game, there's so many numbers, and some of them could be inflated for uh, uh, impact sake. But this team is showing. They're working in the offseason. They're working during the week. They're working on their craft. They're seeing what's wrong, putting together a good performance good performance on the field. And they're doing things in November that are, uh, most teams are not doing. Winning consistently and winning every game since the beginning of the season until now, they are 10-0. Georgia's 10-0. The team up north is 10-0. And TCU is 10-0. Hey, they're doing something. They're only four. They're an exclusive group of four right now. They're trying to be in, in, in that same exclusive group of four at the end of the year. If they keep this up and keep playing better and keep getting better, they got a road to game next week against Maryland, a bad Maryland football team, which I believe they just got skunked. Excuse me, not skunked. skunked goose egg a, week, uh, a couple of days ago. Hey, you go over there to College Park, and you go over there and just turn heads, bust heads up. Because what you did th this past weekend against Indiana – should give you confidence and help you build confidence. And, hey, our passing game, even in the snow, can move the ball. Hey, our defense is getting better and making wrinkles and throwing different things out there that are confusing the opposition. Hey, our offensive line and running game is getting back on track. These are the things you want to happen this time of year. And the Buckeyes answered a lot of questions a week ago because people questioned them. And they said, hey, you can question us all you want to. We'll answer all the questions and show you we can get the job done in inclement weather in November to remain undefeated. The Buckeyes remain undefeated, but they got contributions from numerous players, some that I have mentioned, some that I have not, who contributed in a big way over the weekend in a massive win, 56-14 to win to be exact, over the Hoosiers of Indiana. We will discuss that next right here on Locked on Buckeyes. Inflation has us all thinking about different ways to cut back. Whether it's driving less, dining out less, or buying less from the grocery store, we can all agree there's nothing fun about less. That's why I started using Upside. Upside is an incredible app for anyone who buys gas, groceries, or dines out. With Upside, I don't have to cut back because I get cash back on every purchase. To get started, download the free Upside app. Use promo code LOCKED and get $5 or more cash back on your first, first purchase of $10 or more. Next claim and offer for whatever you're buying on Upside. Check in at the business, pay as usual with credit or debit card, and get paid. In comparison to credit card rewards or loyalty programs, you can earn three times more cash back with Upside. Upside users are earning more than a million dollars every week. That's probably why they have a 4.8 star rating on the App Store. Download the free Upside app and use promo code LOCKED to get $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. That's five dollars or more cash back on your first purchase of ten dollars or more using promo code LOCKED. Thanks for making Locked on Buckeyes your first listen of the day. For your second listen today, check out Locked on Sports today. From the games that matter the most to the biggest stories in sports, go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and insights only Locked on can provide. Locked on Sports today. Available on this app, YouTube, and wherever you get your fine podcast. So 
post-game driving back from Columbus, back home. I was thinking about what could we take away from this game. I had a long drive back home, so I decided to pop in, listen to a few podcasts, and uh, a few of them had the thought that there's nothing to take away. From, there's nothing to take away from this game. It wasn't perfect. The Buckeyes didn't score on every drive. The play calling wasn't exquisite. There weren't things that were um, over the top on every play. But there, yeah, you generally said that you can't really rip this game apart because kind of what you expected. I can rip it apart. We'll do that later in the week. But for right now, I'm not gonna rip, rip things apart because there are numerous players that lot made this game be some in a way that there were other people stating, hey, we can't really rip this game apart. We can't. There are things we can take away. But let's not look at that right now. Just glow and kind of be happy about the Buckeyes' performance because it was so much fun to watch. Now, I mentioned earlier the snow that was there, the wind that was there, and the amount of the effect that the weather had on the game. Pre-game, it started snowing. It was already cold. It was in the 40s. I stood, out, I stood outside at Big Noon kickoff and uh, got to enjoy that till about, oh, about 10.30. Went up to, went to my seats um, and uh, ended up watching the game and quickly seeing, hey, it's going to be it's gonna be a cold one. Um, I ended up bringing a poncho because, hey, I saw rain in the forecast. Your boy didn't want to get drenched and soaked the entire time. In comes the snow. On goes the poncho. Protected the wind. It blocked the wind. Also kept me dry. It was the perfect, perfect thing to utilize in that moment. But also what we witnessed during this game was C.J. Stroud did not have more rushing yards than passing yards this week like he did a week ago. But C.J. Stroud was locked in, dialed in. And even on some of the passes that were not complete, I, I wouldn't put it all on him. He did his job. He did what was needed for him to get the ball down the field. And Stroud did a good job, man. I mean, five touchdown passes in any game. You got to get your hats off to him. Mine Williams, 15 carries, 147. He knew he was going to get a lot of the carries. Not all of the carries, but all of his carries came in the first half because he went down with another injury once again, a leg injury in the latter part, I believe close to the two-minute mark of the second of the first, second quarter in this game. Two minutes to go in the half. He goes down with an injury that was not that was after he went for almost 150 on the ground in the first half, one touchdown. Him and Dallin Hayden, that one-two punch, wasn't the same as him and Travion Henderson, but Dallin Hayden coming in, being a back that was needed, was phenomenal. He was used because Chip Trainum was unavailable for the game. Trevor Henderson was listed as unavailable. Chip Trainum may have been uh, – there were two guys. Chip, Chip, Chip Trainum may have been a game-time decision. He was unavailable, so you got Henderson out. Chip train him out. That's two running backs. Evan Pryor's out for the year. That's three running backs. TC Coffey in the running back rotation for the backups. He's out. That's four running backs. And then Lyon Williams gets hurt. That's five running backs. So all of a sudden, you only had, you have Dallin Hayden. And I was thinking, will we see uh, Caden Saunders? No, we saw Xavier Johnson. And Xavier Johnson in the fourth quarter and even earlier in the game, we got to see Xavier Johnson be used in numerous ways. Two catches. 47 receiving yards. He also had one carry for 71 yards, weaving out and in and out of traffic, doing what was needed to get to pay dirt, get to the end zone. He had a touchdown. And Xavier Johnson, over the next few days, will work in more in that backfield, the running backfield, be kind of a Swiss Army knife for the run, for the team because they're going to need him. Because if these guys keep falling like they are, they're going to need Xavier Johnson, not just what he did today, or excuse me, on Saturday, but he's built confidence and trust throughout the entire team, the entire offseason, saying it's all entire season, hey, Notre Dame game, touchdown. I had I I knew he was on the team. Did I remember what number he was in the moment? No. He's not somebody you think about that's going to be out there playing the football. Xavier Johnson did phenomenal things with the ball in his hands. And Saturday against a bad Indiana team. Really, really bad. I mean, Indiana pulled their quarterback, Connor Basil, like. Ended up moving towards uh, uh, Dexter Williams, who was the, was the quarterback um, when, when Indiana scored their two touchdowns. We'll talk more about the second touchdown here in a second because I still will stand by one statement that I'm making a little bit about why that touchdown was made, was scored. When they went to the new quarterback, that did not derail or get in the way of JT Tui Malowal and Jack Sawyer being phenomenal and being uh, crucial. 
like two of the bright stars on defense for the Buckeyes in Saturday's contest, ball contest of the Hoosiers of Indiana. In this game, Jack Sawyer in a backup role, three tackles, one TFL, excuse me, one and a half, one and a half tackles for loss, which was also the one and a half sacks that he had in this game. JT Tui Merlowell had three total tackles. Those two guys, and Zach Harrison, keep playing good ball, but Jack Sawyer, we're seeing him get more acclimated. He could be that stand up, stand up uh, linebacker. When Ohio State moves to a 3 3 5 from there, 4 2 5, just move a linebacker over. Is he going to be outside? Is he going to be inside? Is he blitzing? Is he dropping? It's a wrinkle that Ohio State has. A lot of other schools don't utilize. And we're quickly seeing Jack Sawyer is progressing and getting better at that role. Two guys, two more guys on defense that are just lethal. One of them we talk about all the – actually, both of them we talk about all the time. This one, Tommy Eichenberg, had the third most tackles in this game, seven tackles, added in three tackles for loss, one quarterback hit, Lathan Ransom, nine tackles, one and a half sacks in this game, uh, one PBU. He also blocked a punt. And Lathan Ransom had a sack on this same drive. He, they, they knocked the Hoosiers – back into their own territory. Um, and then Lathan Ransom got a sack in this drive. But like, okay, Lathan, you have been phenomenal at the safety spot, either back in coverage, coming up and playing the run. You have been phenomenal in this role. The next thing you know, Lathan Ransom, via a, a tweak that was made on the sidelines with special teams coach Parker Fleming, they made the tweak alteration. He goes in for a pump block. Blocks up the punt, and Ryan Day praised Lathan Ransom in the postgame presser, saying, hey, that shows maturity. When you're able to draw something up and discuss something on the sidelines with your with the special teams coach, not even your primary coach, but the special teams coach, and then all of a sudden, you're able to perform it and work it to perfection on the field? Yeah, that's what you want to happen. Lathan Ransom continues to be a bright spot. Remember, Coming into the season, he was not projected to be a starter at Ohio State. That was thought to be Josh Proctor's spot. Proctor has been benched. Ransom has been promoted to one of the safeties at Ohio State. He continues to ball out. Tommy Eichenberg, the numbers for, the, for this game, great. But the numbers for the entire season are even better. Leads all, leads all Buckeyes with 92 tackles on the season. That is 30 more tackles than any other player has this year. Second on the team in tackles is Steel Chambers with 62. He might have, might have, if Lathan Ransom played all 10 games, Ransom might be second on the team in tackles. Lathan Ransom is third on the team in tackles for the season with 54. But Tommy Eckenberg also leads the team in TFLs with 11. Yes, yeah. Talk about that, the linebacker, linebacker position with 11. Cody Simon has four and a half TFLs. Uh, JT Tua Maloa has seven and a half TFLs. Uh, Still Chambers has six TFLs. So your top guy is a linebacker. Your third guy in that span is a linebacker. Linebackers are playing very good football. Eichenberg also has, it, has an interception, two and a half sacks on the year, uh, two PBUs, a touchdown. I mean, he's been all over the field. He is a guy, possibly future All-American, possibly somebody who's drafted in next year's draft. Could be a Buckeye next year. I don't know. Whatever the case is, Eichenberg plays good football. And he was a big problem. Big reason why the Buckeyes defense was so lethal Saturday against the Hoosiers of Indiana. I mentioned that Dexter Williams, the backup quarterback, one of the backup quarterbacks for Indiana, when he came in, they scored late. Well, I still will stay by this moment, and I'll stay it for – I'll keep saying it. The Buckeyes defense stops Indiana. Indiana punts the ball. The backups for the Buckeyes are in. Reed Stockdale, number 87. He muffed the punt on the previous time he was on the field. This time he muffed the punt once again. Indiana recovers inside the red zone. Surely after that, they score. If it wasn't for that moment, Reed Stockdale muffing that punt, the second one where Indiana recovered it, I will say this. The Buckeyes defense where they held the Indiana Hoosiers to a phenomenal game, uh, to, a, to, a great, to a great number. Indiana only had 260, 269 total yards. That number would be less. We would be raving more about the defense if it wasn't for, for a muffed punt by Reed Stockdale late in the game. There's one story I didn't talk about 
There's one story from a player that we need to talk about a little bit more at depth. It gets, it, it gets a whole segment. It's about Cameron Babb. He played, had his first career reception, which was a touchdown. This story, the backstory, you want to hear it. It illuminates what we witnessed on Saturday afternoon. We'll discuss it next right here on Locked on Buckeyes. This week's thrilling moment in college football is brought to you by Nissan. The thrilling designs behind the new lineup from Nissan are intended to empower drivers in vehicles as capable as a driver themselves. When I think of unbelievable abilities on the field for this week's thrilling moment, it has to be from the player that I literally just talked about, Cameron Babb. Numerous injuries, numerous setbacks, an injury in his senior year of high school was with a setback prior to him coming to Ohio State. And what did we get from Cameron Babb? He gets on the field in the fourth quarter, runs a pivot route, touchdown. Stroud to Babb in the red zone. And we'll discuss more about what happened after that. But seeing Cameron Babb after going through all of the things he's went through, being awarded with the Black O jersey, seeing, knowing more about the story and how he got to this moment in, this, in his career made this the thrilling moment of the weekend. This segment has been inspired by the thrilling new designs featured across Nissan's new lineup of vehicles. Pursue what throws you in the all-new Frontier Armada or Pathfinder today. Available now at NissanUSA.com. Cameron Babb. Some, some of you might be saying, Jay, I have never heard that name before. Or I'll be saying, I missed the game over the weekend. I keep hearing all of this stuff about Cam Babb or Cameron Babb and what he did on the field. What was it? And then those of you that watched the game, know a lot of the story, heard the story on the television, and you saw the reaction from the players. Cam Babb has had one of the weirdest and oddest, probably most abnormal careers you will ever hear about from a player. Four ACL tears. Not one, not two, not three. Four ACL tears. Had another leg injury. Five injuries during his football career. Between the senior year of high school and this point in his life right now, he's voted as a team captain. Everybody knows he is not going to be one of the top players, receivers at Ohio State. He's not going to start. He could be in rotation if he, stay, if he stays healthy. But he is not going to be that player. He's going to get a lot of clock, a lot of run, being the top of the receiver room. That's not him. Also, he re he's a recipient of the Block O jersey, which was started, I believe, a couple years ago, which gets awarded to a player who exemplifies and portrays what it means to be a Buckeye. Um, it's in reference and tribute to a former Ohio State player um, who, number 99, uh, forget, his, forget his name, actually, at the moment. Uh, but he it's kind of an award for you are what we want as a Buckeye. It doesn't say it has to go to a starter, but a player on the team. Generally an older player. First, it was Jonathan Cooper in 2020. Last year, it was there Munford. Uh, Munford did not wear that jersey during this during the game because it's an eligible receiver number, and that would be illegal for him as an offensive lineman. But then this year, it is Cameron Babb, and Cam Babb has that once again. Prior to the season starting, Cameron Babb had another injury, which was another setback. And you might be saying, Jay, setback, great. No, it's not good at all. No, it's not. He kept working. He kept grinding. He kept working. He kept grinding. And the next thing you know, in this moment, in the fourth quarter, now I'm at the game. This is actually towards the end zone where I was uh, closest to, so I got to see the play unfold. Uh, play action, roll out towards the Indiana sideline. It's a pivot route. I see it. Not the easiest route to run. Not the easiest throw at that time. Stroud throws it very well. Uh, pinpoint accuracy, once again, touchdown. Now, what happens next? All of the players celebrate with this player. And in the moment, I am trying to figure out, who is that? Who is that? Zero. Now, I, I knew Kimmer Babb re received the Baco jersey. Forgot he was even in the game at this point in time. Cameron Babb, touchdown. 
and the entire team celebrated. The entire team. Before that happened, he went back to the end zone, got on his knees, literally thanked God and Jesus for him being in this moment and being where he is in his career, for getting him to this point. Stroud and other players held players back to allow Cameron Babb to have this moment by himself to celebrate this monument, monumental moment in his career. Next thing you know, once he gets off his knees, he was down on both knees, they look at looking up to the sky. Once he gets off both knees, the players go all go all around him. Offensive players come all on the field celebrating. Some more come on the field to celebrate. Defensive players come on the field to celebrate. He goes off the field and they're celebrating for it looks like five to ten minutes. He had a special moment with his mom, which was documented all the broadcast. There are pictures going out. Jimmy Birmingham, Jeremy Birmingham of rivals. Did that very thing as well. Got a picture, phenomenal picture of that moment. You never know the story about these players. We never know what, what they go through. But C.J. Stroud, Marvin Harrison Jr., Ameka Abuka, Ryan Day, Brian Hartline. I saw him have a moment with Tony Alford. They, they know part of the grind. They don't know the mental hurdle that it has taken. That he's had to he leap through to get to this moment in his career. Cameron Babb, that moment, his first career reception is his first career touchdown. Hey, y'all, happy for him. Congratulations, Cam. You deserve that moment. Look to see you play more. Hope you stay healthy throughout the rest of this year. You know it would be great if the book has won the natty and Cam Babb can commemorate and celebrate this year, not only scoring a touchdown, which was his first reception, but also winning the natty in that same year. Out of here on a Monday. Love being back behind the mic. I was away. That's why there was no postcast. The plan is to have a postcast this weekend at the conclusion of Ohio State's game against Maryland, which kicks off at 3.30 p.m. Eastern time on ABC. As always, you can follow me on Twitter at jstevens07. You can send all of your emails to jstevens317 at gmail.com. Thank you for making Locked on Buckeyes your first listen. For your next listen, check out the Locked on Sports Today podcast, the biggest stories of the, of the day, plus instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day. Available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your fine podcast.